During this training video, I'll go over the required steps to configure the PLX30 gateways to communicate with RS links. Let's get started. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up ProSoft Configuration Builder, or PCB, and this is a software that's used to configure the PLX30 gateways. And from here I'll right click and choose Add Module. I'll choose Module Type. I'll choose my PLX30. Browse down to the EIP MBS4. Click OK. Now I'm going to expand it. And you'll notice it has a bunch of different options in here. Now one thing to, to remember, this video is strictly covering the communications between RS Links and the PLX30 gateway. First, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and configure my Ethernet connection. Now these are the settings that are going to download to your module once you choose the download option. So remember, in the Ethernet configuration, this is the IP address that you want your module to have. So I know I need mine to be 10.1.2.213. Then the gateway will be 10.1.2.1. If you don't have a gateway, leave the gateway at 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0. Click OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Modbus port 1 connection. I'm going to double click on Modbus port 1. By default the port's disabled so I'm going to go ahead and enable it. Now I'm going to change the minimum response time. What this is, this is how long the Modbus serial port waits before it responds to a master command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this to a 10 millisecond response time. So essentially the Modbus master is going to issue a request and 10 milliseconds later the Modbus slave port is going to respond. And that's about it for the Modbus port configuration. You'll notice that the only thing I changed in there is I changed the minimum response time and I enabled the port. Everything else I left on its default values. Now from here I'm going to click on the PLX31 EIP MBS4. I'm going to go down to download from PC to device and now I'm going to make sure that I connected to the proper unit. Let's say the module didn't have an IP address. Well, what I can do is I can click on Browse Devices. And what's going to happen now is the software is going to send out a broadcast message and any device that supports the ProSoft Discovery Service is going to respond. And right here, the one in green is the one that I want to configure. So there's really nothing to do there. What we can do is we can right click on it and we can assign it a temporary IP address if you have a module that is on the incorrect subnet for your network, well you can assign it an IP address that matches your subnet. But mine's good now so I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Now what I can do I can click the test connection just to make sure that the connection is good and click download. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up RS links. Now I'm going to click on the RS who button and now I'll click on my Ethernet IP driver and I'm just going to arrange the screen a little bit and while I do that let me just explain that this video is assuming that the PLX30 is already connected to your network. Now I'll just go down to my PLX30 and there you see it right there. Now from here what I'll do is I can right click I'll choose upload EDS from device and basically you just keep clicking next. Click next all the way through and RS links will import the EDS file and once the EDS file is imported you might have to click back up on your Ethernet driver, Ethernet IP driver and then once you do it'll refresh for you. So there's my PLX31 EIP-MBS4 that's the Modbus serial gateway with four serial ports. Okay so now what we'll do we'll click on DDE OPC topic configuration and now I'm going to create a new topic let me just you see I have quite a few of them in here and what I'll do first is I'm going to highlight my Ethernet IP PLX30 gateway. I'll create my topic. Now I'm going to click Apply. Click Yes. Now I'll click on the Data Collection tab. And I'm going to change the processor type to Logix 5000. So I'll click Apply. And now I'm going to click Done. You'll notice I didn't change anything else in the last tab there. And that's pretty much it for the RS Logix topic. All right, now let's go ahead and configure our Modbus master. For this test, what I'm using is I'm going to be using a third-party program called ModScan32. That's from a company called WinTech. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the register type to holding registers. And you'll notice that the device ID is already set on one, so I don't need to do anything there. 
and I'm not pulling a hundred registers I'm just gonna we're just gonna set up 20 for now now I'm gonna go into the connection and I'm gonna set up the serial port for my simulation software I'm gonna choose COM3 for the port that I'm using now I, again I want these settings to match what I set the PLX30 serial port up with and I'll click on protocol everything looks good I'm gonna change my response timeout to 1000 click OK now you'll see that it is pulling away now let's switch gears again and open up RS links here's a quick little test to see if you have your DDE OPC topic set up correctly so what I'll do is I'll go into DDE OPC topic configuration and you'll notice that on the right side window in the tree window it, nothing is highlighted well I have the workstation highlighted but you'll notice that once I click my topic it'll expand to the appropriate device that it's linked to so as I click my PLX 31 topic you'll notice that it'll expand for me and highlight the correct one now that's just just a quick test to see that you have everything linked correctly now I'm going to use the RS links OPC test client I'll click server I'll connect to the RS links OPC server now I'm going to add my group I'm just going to call this group 1 and I'm going to change the pull rate so I'm just going to go ahead and choose 500 milliseconds now I'm going to add my item and in the item you don't really need to do anything in the access path the only thing you need is an item name so let's go up to the item name and now we want to add our topic in brackets and square brackets so it'll be PLX 31 and then now you need to add the tag name now what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to open up our user manual to show you how these are addressed. You'll notice that we have the bool, the ints, the dents, the reels, bit arrays, and the one that I'm going to use now simply is just the ints. I'm going to use the integers. And you'll notice under the tag name we have int underscore data bracket. So that's our int array. And we have 4,000 registers that we can address. So how do these addresses or Ethernet IP tags correspond to Modbus registers? Well, if we review this simple chart, you see that int data 0 corresponds to the very first register in the gateway's internal database. It is also the first Modbus register. It is 40,001 for holding registers, 30,001 for input registers, bits 1 through 16 for coils, and bits 1 through 16 for discrete inputs. So now let's see how we set that up in the OPC client. So to see how I do that, let's go back to the RS Links OPC topic, and now I'll add the int data zero. And I'll add my item, I'll do a paste, and that should be it. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And now there you see we have our data items being pulled by RS Links. Now you'll notice that I can go in here, I can write a value, one, two, three, four, five, hit OK and you'll notice it shows up in the very first Modbus register on the slave. Now over here I can do the same thing. I can write a value over here and you'll notice that it shows up in the second data point that RS Links is pulling. Now for the third one I'll do a write. 3, 2, 1, OK. And again you'll see it show up on the Modbus slave. And that's about it for this training session. If you have any questions please feel free to give us a call. Until next time, happy training.